Good morning, Warrior fans. I'm Jeremy Van Lu alongside Coach Kaz Seinel and Coach John Everingham. It's time now for Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix. Normally, Bill Dixon would be sitting in this chair, but he's a little under the weather. So, Coach Everingham, you got to deal with me today. Is that what okay? Pro- that's not. That's going to be a problem. I'll tell you. Uh, that. I, I'm thinking it is. It's about an everyday occurrence. I was man. just going to say <laughs> yeah. we, 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 he has to go through this every day. So, welcome. Glad you're back with us again on this holiday weekend of Thanksgiving. Hopefully, uh, you had some quality time with the family. We sure did. You know, uh, it, it goes fast. You know, we we gave the kids about 48 hours off. Uh, Wednesday we had a kind of a short walk through, um, and then. The rest of the day, Wednesday, all day Thursday, obviously Thanksgiving, and then uh, most of the day on Friday, you know, we had with our families and uh, got a chance to kind of step away and uh, get rested up, and and we were back at it last night. So um, when I was in high school, my uncle was the varsity wrestling coach. As a matter of fact, this morning they've got uh, their November Super Duels uh, kicking off in the gym before your contest tonight in the gym, and I remember... Thanksgiving night, those boys having to come back to the school after eating yeah. that big meal because you know you got to make weight uh, in in wrestling, and I know that's not the case in basketball. But what do you tell your players after a nice known big meal yeah. uh, and gluttony that that we all partake <laughs> in? Um, you know, leading up to a, a game in a couple of days. It, it you know we talked a lot about this, uh, Coach O'Connell and I yesterday. Um, that the, the the plan that we have in place seems to be working because we, we actually brought the kids in at about 3 o'clock and we just did, it wasn't uh, the most enjoyable little 45-minute <laughs> workout, but it's a lot of running. And uh, what I say is kind of running the turkey off because you do, you know, that 48-hour <laughs> period, it's really about either traveling or relaxing and you're just kind of laying around. You're not really active and then you're eating a lot. So, um as nice as it, as it is to kind of get away and spend some time with your family, it's not the most ideal situation for athletes uh, to kind of sit around and eat all day. Um, so we bring them back in, and and I, I think, you know, I've been doing this a long time or long enough that to know that it's it's a weird phenomenon when you bring guys in after Christmas or, or Thanksgiving or after a, a longer break. It's just not real fluid, and balls are flying through, you know, our hands and turnovers and – it's like almost like we forgot what we were doing, but but we got through that 45 minute segment. We sent them home for a couple hours just to kind of regroup, and we came back and we were actually very sharp last night um, in our practice. So um, there certainly is a lot of thought that goes into getting the team back into the groove, into the mix, and and when you have a game the next night, yeah. you know it's even more of a you can't throw that practice away completely. You know, so we did a good job. The team did a good job. Um, the guys were ready to practice last night uh, about 6.30. We practiced about 6.30 to 7.30, um, and we were pretty sharp. Coach Kaz, I'm sure you have a routine of working out after a oh, huge absolutely. meal on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, I right? do. I eat, and then I see how, how many sports are on. And which ESPN channel I'm going to watch. That's uh, I'll tell you, it is really difficult. Uh, I can remember back in the day after, especially basketball, because you got Thanksgiving and then you got Christmas and then you know all the practices you have to get in on and uh, it, it's it's uh, it's hard for the kids and yet you know it's so good for you yeah. you know and and now that I'm retired and old I don't have to do that anymore <laughs> so your thumb is getting the workout oh on man the remotes, look at look, 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 look at the well, bicep in that great, thumb there. <laughs> that's really, very good all right well yeah. coach um, Fairfield. So oh before Thanksgiving, before everybody got the big meal and time with family, uh, you opened up the season at Fairfield. And, and once again, we apologize to the community. Um, Verizon just didn't want to work uh, at the gym uh, at Fairfield the other night. We tried, didn't we, Cass? Oh, man. Bill we tried. and you went round and yeah, round. And he yeah. went up to the, try to find a different place and talked about connecting this and connecting that. And I thought, hey, I don't know any of this. I'll have my slide reel ready for all the all the yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but unfortunately we weren't able to put the game on the air, and that, and we know that that that, that can happen. So, uh, but there still was a basketball game that was played. So, coach, tell us a little bit about Tuesday night's Fairfield contest. Yeah, we we talked about you know um, in the coach's show last week about how important it was for us to get out on the floor and 
just start to have games, you know, experiences because um, there's a lot of question marks surrounding our teams. We got Keaton Dukes back and, and uh, Welty, who's a solid guard, and, and Colin Robertson. Um, but after that, you know, we got four guys that played in that game that have never stepped foot basically on a um, on a varsity floor to play a varsity game, you know. So there's a lot of question marks. But um, in terms of, you know, getting guys on the floor, getting some experiences that we can – kind of start to you know shape our team it's so important uh to get out there and play because you got you know there's some players that that uh that can perform in practice and and when nobody else is watching and there's other players that maybe um you call them gamers you know when they get out on the bright lights they they tend to turn it on so um you never really know for sure what you have until you actually get out there and start playing and so um i thought in the first half the first quarter i think um was six to yeah, six. Yeah, tied, all tied up, six six, and I thought, oh man, this is going to be quite a game. Bill and I looked at each other, and we were right. It was a quite a game. Yeah. You know, both teams pretty evenly matched, and both teams working really hard. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's like I said last week that you know, two two programs and a new coach and Coach Heinen that um, that's going to get his guys to play hard. There's no question about that. But you could you could tell both both teams were kind of feeling each other out in in that first quarter there wasn't a whole lot of offensive output you know just we had some guys in the first half that were that were out there kind of playing it safe you know trying not to make mistakes and not to you know what i'm sure what they were thinking is not to screw anything up and and we weren't really looking to score you know like i think we can you know and that was the kind of the discussion at halftime was it you know winning and losing at this point in the season you know right at the beginning is not you know, priority number one. We got to get out there and we got to play like we know we can play and start attacking, you know, the basket and start starting to make basketball moves. And and so uh, we came out in the third quarter. You know, it, <clears throat> one thing I do want to say about that game too is that uh, as we learn about our team, we were down 18 to eight and uh, we were down 10 points in that game. And I don't think we flinched in any way, shape no. or form. You know, so our guys were were very positive. You know, when things start to go south, um, the tendency is to you know to start bickering or or blaming or pointing fingers or to have bad body language or bad attitudes. Um, and we saw absolutely none of that. And so it's kind of like I said before, it's important to get out there on the floor to kind of see what you have, like what sort of things do we need to to uh, to teach better, you know, as a coaching staff and and what sort of personalities we have out there on the floor so I thought it was a really good sign you know early on when we were down 18 to 8 um you know with a young team normally you'd burn a timeout and you yeah, tell them I was surprised up. at that that you didn't call you know you just I, I didn't let think them, let them play I didn't think they were flustered let them go through it. I, I really didn't think I, I saw no poor body language I, no. I didn't see anybody bickering um I thought we were in a good place there was really no need to uh, kind of call a timeout unless we were going to set up a play or a set. Um, so I was really proud of our guys, you know, that they responded after kind of taking that early punch from Fairfield. You know, obviously it's at Fairfield, on the road, young team. Um, and I don't know how many people were there, but it felt like there were Those. there were a lot. You know, it, the, the, the noise in that gym, um, it's different than in practice when, when players can hear you as a coach and then you go on the road in an environment like that and they it's hard to communicate with them you know on the floor so you know that first half and you know we're down 18 to 8 uh welty made a big you know shot from the volleyball line with a last second he shot did. to uh <laughs> cut it to i think six it's, points maybe yeah it was uh, 15 to 9 at the half so i thought that was uh i know excuse me here yeah, no, let's see, I got here, nah, I can't read my writing anymore. 21-15 at the half. Yeah, 21 I was really impressed with Weldy. I mean, he came out and the way he moved the ball around, the way he, you know, tried to get people, not tried to, but did get people active inside and in the passing, and uh, very unselfish. I And then, of course, you know, uh, Dukes is amazing. He just uh, was able to, you know, take the lead and, yeah. and score. So it's going to be really, really interesting tonight. I, I really I've been talking about this all week and nobody you know at home they oh yeah 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 but it's it's going to be Bill and I are going to have oh well, now Bill and I but uh, Roger Roger and I are going to have a good time tonight it's yeah. going to be really fun to watch this game well I think it, there's reason to be excited out there you know if you're a Warrior fan uh, because we have the pieces of the puzzle you know uh, like you said Welty who yes 
distributes the ball well. He handles the ball at the point guard position. He's got the experience. You know, he's a senior. He's got a good, solid frame. Um, he shoots the ball um, uh, adequately, you know, and, and he, so he can stroke it from the outside. He can drive and kick, and, and I and think he had – off. Yeah, he had, I think he had four assists, you know, um, in the Fairfield game. So, you know, we have that spot kind of covered. Um, you know, we have the man, too. Dukes is kind of yeah. the man. He's been around for four years, and – and uh, he's proven that he can score consistently, score, you know, between 15 and, and 25 points on any given night. And so even last year, he went more than that sometimes. I think he had 34 against uh, wow. Westview and 28 against uh, Northwood late in the season last year. And then with Colin, we got some size on the inside. He had 11 yes. rebounds, you know, 11 rebounds. Yep. So we start adding pieces of the puzzle beyond that uh, with <clears throat> Miles and Maddox Everingham, you know, out there you know, shooting the basketball and, and kind of getting their feet wet um, as freshmen. Um, I think people are going to start to see the making of a really strong basketball team. Coach, talk, you oh, mentioned – sorry, I, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, talk about the last few minutes of that game. Yeah. I mean, that was – Bill and I were going crazy. That could have been anybody's game those last few minutes. Uh, and, and the way – you know, just, uh, just a question of trying to put something together and, and making it succeed. Yeah, we had <clears> – you know, we had – you know, we kind of came back in the third quarter. We came out of the locker room and we really attacked. You know, we scored 14 points, you know, in the third quarter. And if it wasn't for a couple kind of uh, uh, mental mistakes that, that we made, we it, we really should have doubled them up at least in that quarter, 14, maybe to seven. But we ended up beating them by one, one point in that quarter, um, which yeah. leads to, you know, the fourth quarter where we felt really good going into that fourth quarter, even though we're still down four. Um, and, and you can kind of see that, you know, the ball didn't quite bounce our way. Um, you know, we didn't get the breaks and you really shouldn't expect to get those types of breaks on the road, you know, uh, whether it was a call here or there, or, you know, uh, just like I said, the ball bouncing the wrong way, but we kept plugging away, you know, that I don't know about you guys, but it felt like the last 30, 40 seconds of that game took, you know, in real time took 15, 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes. You yeah. know, because we did a good job of utilizing our timeouts. Um, we got an offensive rebound, um, you know, on a, on a missed free throw. But we certainly had chances. Yes. We had, we had uh, you know, Welty makes two really solid drives to the basket and, and uh, missed a couple bunnies, you know, in oh, there, yeah. which is what we wanted him to do. Uh, Maddox, uh, Everingham had a follow-up put back. That was a nice offensive rebound that just crawled off the rim, yes. just barely. Um, and so, but I think what you did see too on, on a positive side is uh, you saw our young guys make a couple huge threes. You know, Maddox. Oh, yeah, that uh, was huge. From the left wing, I think we were down four uh, with under two minutes to go, just stroked a three from over there. That was a big shot. Um, you know, Colin got a great offensive rebound, kicks it out to Miles, and he knocks down another big three. So, um, I thought you saw two teams kind of swinging for the fences there they right did. at the end. And, and you know, as a coach, you, you look back and you just, those situations just go through your head over and over and over again. And I think I could have done a better job in certain situations coaching those guys. But, you know, the last, you know, play of the game, um, you know, we, they missed a couple free throws. We got the ball with seven seconds to go. I remember looking up the clock, and, and our best player, Keaton Dukes, got the ball with about three and a half seconds to go at half court. And I decided not to call timeout in that situation and thought, you know, we're going to live and die with, with what Keaton does here. And and unfortunately for us, fortunately for them, uh, 33 makes a, a nice little play and kind of gets his hand in there and tips the ball away. So, But for us to have a chance to win that game, um, after being down and, and battling through, you know, our youth and inexperience and, and the road game and everything like that, I think is a really good sign for us. And, and coach, it was the first game. And you mentioned you got to learn. You got to learn yeah. as you go, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, no, but you yeah. got to learn as you go. We're going to learn who we are. And I think uh, we learned a lot about who we are. We're, we're going to battle. We're going to scratch and claw. We're going to make big plays and and uh, we have a high basketball IQ too, you know. Um, um, so, and we have a really positive vibe going right now. So, um, I, I feel good about where we're at. You know, winning, losing certainly is going to be important at, at some point in the season. But we're really trying to preach to the guys that let's just go out there and play. 
uh, let the chips fall where they may and, and don't worry about the record, you know, type thing. And, yeah. and um, let's just keep getting better. Tonight, we're going to get better. All right. Well, we're going to be talking about tonight here in the third segment. Coming up, we're going to talk about the Pathways CTE program. As a matter of fact, this particular program where their studio and this radio station comes from. And uh, Coach Everingham knows a few things about that program as well and all the others. So we'll be coming back with more Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix with Coach John Everingham. I'm Jeremy Van Lu alongside Coach Kaz Zinal. And in this segment... We wanted to talk a little bit about the Pathways CTE program here at Wabasee High School, which is, uh, I know for me, near and dear to my heart. Uh, it provides for my family. Uh, but uh, Coach Everingham, um, you have a day job, and uh, you have been uh, involved uh, in a CTE program for quite some time. So what do we want to talk about this morning? Yeah, I'd, <clears throat> I think it's, uh, I, you know, this show – you know, in particular, we talk about what happens behind the scenes maybe a little bit too when, you know, not just dur during the basketball games, but we like to touch on, you know, why kids are going to school, you know, education and um, teaching and learning and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to maybe share with uh, the listeners out there or what goes on behind the scenes. You know, I got, I'll, t I'll share this one story. I think this will kind of kick off the conversation, but I was at, on a road game in the NLC and I'll, I'll leave the names of the school and the players out of it but um, the best player probably last year in the NLC we were on the road and uh, the head coach was actually uh, sick that day and the assistant had to take over the assistant happened to be the father of the best player and uh, we were talking before the game and he was talking very highly of Wawasee and and to the point um, where he was saying, you know, if we if we didn't go to to Mishawaka, he goes, my son wanted to go to Wawasee, and he's like, you know, you got that TV station, you know, um, uh, and the radio that that cover the games um, like they do, and he just thought that was the coolest thing. But uh, you know, we turn the lights off before uh, the game and kind of get people hyped up. We have a good following, a faithful following that that actually come to the game and cheer us on, and so. Um, I think it's all of that kind of put together that creates an environment um, that people really enjoy coming to the games. You know, my job is the product that we put on the floor, right, and uh, trying to win basketball games and, and putting the type of kids out there that our community, w w you know, is proud of. So um, I know other people see that, you know, and a lot of times we work here at the school and, and we don't probably get all the – you know the praise and the comments we don't know all that's kind of going on but i can tell you it definitely is and you guys do a great job here with the with the radio and the tv and and the production and the broadcasting and and the interviews the coaches shows and and the tv station but um that's like extracurricular you know and so there's uh like you said we have a day job and we work very hard to create uh educational opportunities for uh, for kids in 14 of our CTE programs uh, across the three school radius, you know, and seven of them here at Wawasee. Um, and we get to show off a couple of those programs uh, during our basketball games and other uh, athletic events and even beyond the athletic events. And, and, you know, I have had, I don't know how many times students come up to me and say, Mr. Van Lu, I really want to be in your class, but we're not able to fit that into to our schedule. Is there anything else? Do you have a club or what have you? And, and I don't necessarily call it a club. I say, yeah, it's called sports broadcasting. Mm -hmm. That That's one thing that we cannot teach during the school day because there's no athletic events going on during the school day, of course. So the only way to teach it and how it works is to do it live. And the kids get a rude awakening that very first game when we throw them to the wolves. It's like that for the kid, <laughs> like the first it. time he goes out for basketball, right? And yeah. the coach says, here's the ball. Here's how you dribble it and put it in the hole, right? Um, uh, yeah, and, and they, they learn real quick uh, what kind of things you can run into and adversities that, yeah. that, that we run into. But um, I'll tell you, COVID really boosted this program quite a bit as far as the uh, – the want, need, and desire to, to be able to have the ability to stay home 
and and watch and listen to these games and our numbers have gone through the roof, yeah, roof because of that but we i'm and i say we myself and mr huffman we would not be able to do this all the behind the scenes stuff if it wasn't for students that uh come in as a matter of fact tonight we'll have three students i'm not going to be here mm-hmm. my brother's getting married today and oh, wow. that always causes a problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be putting a tux on here after bed. <laughs> uh, but you know that causes a problem right now. Uh, Bill's sick. Yeah, I'm not going to be here, and so you scramble around. But we've got a big enough crew that uh, it, it, it pulls through. And, and of course, we we bleed green and gold, yep. and um, we want to be a part uh, of the success here at Wawasi. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing, too, is that it's not like you just flip these cameras on and they, they go. Um, no. And so yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of behind the scenes. Yeah. I've see, seen it in action, and it's really amazing because kids are really digging it. You know, they, they enjoy doing it. Um, it. It is so difficult. Uh, it, just anything that, that, that you see somebody that makes it look easy, like, uh, you know, you and Bill make it look easy when yeah. you're doing the broadcasting, and, and Bill's been doing this forever, and so have you, Kaz. But... Uh, these kids are that are behind the scenes. It, it's not easy, you know, some of the things that they're doing and putting together. And it's just like my basketball team. It, it we make mistakes, right? And and we learn from those mistakes. And it's yeah. the same thing in here. Um, you know, when when kids are running the doing the engineering behind the scenes, and and so it's really impressive pro- process. Coach, well, tell and, me. And, and real quick, I want to okay. say something to that. Um, and in case you didn't know, this year. Uh, all of your home games are also being broadcast on IHSAATV.org. Oh, really? I think that's the website, but it's the IHSAA Champions Network. Uh, we signed an agreement with the IHSAA uh, to uh, to bring those contests now statewide. Yeah. Not only via our YouTube channel and the radio station. So you know we're, we are reaching out, and it, and it wasn't our request. The IHSAA came to wow. us and said, "Hey." You guys are doing such an amazing job up there, and we want to showcase students in action, not mm-hmm. only on the court or on the football field, but behind the scenes. And so uh, that's really neat to, to have that extra publicity. Coach, tell me about all the seven programs that are here. You know, I hear about them, but yeah. I, you know you got welding, and, and you know you got the, the the broadcasting. Go ahead. Yeah, we've, you know, Vince Beasley is the, the, the CTE director now. I was for about three years. I, I've been at, involved in CTE for probably 12 years total in my educational career. But uh, we got a special thing going on here. We're growing, too. We're seeing more and more students from, um, from a five-school radius, including West Noble and Goshen students that are coming in and participating in what we're doing. So, uh, you know, people see what we're doing, administrators, superintendents, they see what we're doing, they believe in what we're doing, and they send the kids and, and uh, for us to educate right here. The seven programs that we have here, and uh, forgive me if I leave one out, but we, we have, um, I'll save uh, one for last year, but, uh, you know, Brad Craig and his automotive uh, class has got 50, 60 students. It's booming. Um, we have amazing facilities in Derek Fisher's um, uh, marine mechanics uh, program. Uh, Aaron McKinley and his building trades. They build a house every year and and uh, took over for uh, Ed Waltz a few years ago when he retired. Um, we have uh, Ken Long's uh, welding program um, just down the road here. It's not everything's on campus here, but uh, Randy Warren and, and her health science uh, program is an amazing program. Probably 40 students, you know, right now, which is booming. All of these programs are so, so, sorry. Some of these programs are fairly fairly new. Where we started with seven welders year one, and kind of built that program. Uh, Marine mechanics probably like 10 years ago built that program. Uh, welding and and built that program. So radio, TV, and and then maybe lastly would be the culinary program, uh, which I'd like to talk a little bit about how they're going to get involved with uh, boys basketball as well. Culinary, that means food. Oh, Bill. And Bill, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't and, get me all excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you and Bill, you know food. Um, but I know food as well. And, and I've been in that kitchen many a times because the aroma that fills the halls when they're, when they're in there cooking, I just have to stop in and see what the kids are working on. So 
some exciting news yeah. about home basketball games with culinary arts. Go. All right. Yeah. Because how much how much time we got here? This these fourteen minute segments go so fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, un- well, you you got about five minutes. Buddy. So five minutes to talk about this new uh, initiative that we have. But um, I keep kind of going back to extracurricular uh, opportunities for kids, and and a lot of people think extracurricular they think sports. You know, and uh, Wallace does a, an amazing job at offering a wide variety of opportunities, you know, for students to get involved in extracurricular and co-curricular, you know, uh, the, the pep band and, and the, the, uh, the marching band and, and the plays that go on and things like that. We have some amazingly talented, you know, individuals that do a lot of extracurricular activities, but, you know, within the CTE department, we like to compete. We like to put on display what our kids can do and, and, uh, this year, I think we're going to get more involved in Skills USA and, and things where kids can kind of go compete in their uh, different areas. But one thing that they uh, that we like to have them do is practice, you know, just like a basketball team would. And, and so um, <clears throat> actually Coach Scott Hetrick was involved with me and in, in thinking of an idea to open up a restaurant during the basketball games. And, oh, and wow. so um, we're actually going to do that. And it's very possible. I have to watch what I say. Uh, certainly there's no promises yet, but, um, I believe next weekend, um, December the 3rd, uh, our home game against Manchester will be the first night for our restaurant. And, uh, we're going to call it the upper deck club. It's a VIP, uh, fan experience where, you know, you get preferred parking back at door 17, you get free admin admittance into the, uh, into the game. You're going to be greeted by for, uh, because I'm, I'm generally not that smart a uh, concierge is that sound yeah, about right good, yeah where a student is going to be greeting uh the people as they come in so we'll have 40 seats in our restaurant um that will be available to you know our parents we have uh um we have table sponsors already in line in place uh oh that, that are buying meals for the entire season up front you know so if if uh if a business purchases which they have um, purchase a table for the entire season. If they can't make it or one of their employees can't make it, uh, we will communicate with them and we'll give out the free meals to maybe the students in the student section uh, where they can go up and eat or uh, teachers within the school um, or a needy family. Maybe they we, maybe we just bring in a needy family. The parents will have opportunities to uh, sit and eat during the JV game. And uh, most importantly, uh, um, beyond creating that environment in our gymnasium that's different you know you go to a professional game and i kind of really um the idea we thought of last year but i really started thinking more and more about it this year i went to a notre dame game um and was sitting up in one of those fancy boxes up there um and um uh, you know i thought we we got to do this because we have some amazingly talented um, um students in our culinary program and we got to show them off you know so you'll see them in their chef suits and <laughs> serving people because the restaurant service business is certainly a part of our curriculum in, in culinary. So um, I'm really excited for Dan Bauer and his program to kind of show off what they do because we see it maybe at a um, at uh, the end of the year, you know, banquets yeah, where they, say, yeah. they do all the catering and stuff like that. The food is amazing. The kids are going to prepare the food and they're also going to be working on the, on the restaurant service portion. So we're not producing and there's nothing wrong with these types of culinary students that maybe go into fa- we're, work to fast food type places we're promo- uh we are producing commercial cooks chefs yeah you know and so they've been cooking and and doing real meals now they get to do that for actual people and so i think it's a great opportunity for us uh, within the wawasee uh, basketball program uh, because it creates a cool environment, you know, something that nobody else is doing, number one. And number two, we kind of get to show off culinary, just like we're doing the radio TV program. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Where's this restaurant going to be at? Where are you going to physically put this place? That's going to be on the uh, south end, right? South is that way. Yeah, south, south end of the balcony. So the balcony up oh. there, we're going to close those bleachers up there. We'll have tables all across, to, you know, How uh, neat. the back end. And that was something that... Um, you know, anytime you think of an idea like that, it's got to pass through the channels of oh, you yeah. know, the administration and central office. And I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, um, as we thought outside the box and thinking this is something that would be really cool, without a shadow of a doubt, overwhelming support, you know, from our, excuse me, our principal, our athletic director and superintendent. This is like, oh, that would be so cool if we if we could pull that one off. And then 
lastly, I'll say to the community, you yeah, know, the business it's, owners it's that, that put the money up front to buy those tables. Um, and so I'm excited about that happening. There's a lot of behind the scenes that, that go into getting that set up. I'm hoping by next Friday we'll have something in place. But if not, it's coming very, very soon. Well, Kaz, unfortunately, yeah. that is on the opposite side of yeah, where you broadcast. I was thinking that. I was thinking that. And so you're you're not uh, going to be able to partake, but uh, who well, knows? You, we you know a few people. You're going to do it during JV games, though. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Well, well, well I mean, you know. You know, we, we, we know a few people <laughs> that might be able to let you experience it because it'd be a great opportunity to promote it on air. And and not only you two that are on the front side of the broadcast, but us us flunkies back yeah. here, Huffman and I, mm-hmm. and, the, and the kids back in the studios. So. But like, would there be any food left if Bill and I? <laughs> no, go that's true. That's, that's, you got to let us go be, first. That's going to be a real problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. All right. Well, exciting news. Uh, thanks, Coach, for bringing that to our attention. And and um, again, you know, we were talking specifically about our Pathway CTE programs, but you did mention the uh, co-curriculars like the marching band who yep. just went to state for the first yep. time and 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 we just uh, put that guys and dolls musical on and i know you were there the other yep. night and got to watch that some amazing talent not only athletically but musically and and socially i mean the, the whole bit uh great things are happening at Wabasee Community School Corporation. So coming up, we're going to talk about tonight's game. The Angola Hornets are coming to town. That's next on Coach's Corner right here on 93.7 FM, The Mix. Welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix. Jeremy Van Loo in for Bill Dixon this morning. Coach Kaz Zinal and Coach John Everingham. Tonight, it's basketball on the hardwood here at the Hardwood TP. The Angola Hornets are coming to town. And I was just saying off air, the one thing I know about Angola is that they have one of those fancy buses like we have. You know, our warrior <laughs> buses that, that Coach Everingham gets to travel in when they go yeah. away. Yeah, yeah they, they've got that same bus, so they must have got together at the same time. The only thing is, is theirs are different colors. Oh, all. really? Yeah, yeah well, horn is purple a little different than a warrior, yellow, right? I think, is what their colors are. So, uh, Angola, Coach, it's their first game. This will be your second game, so you're no stranger to playing the Hornets. Tell us a little bit about tonight's contest. Well, we're we're excited to get back on the floor. You know, and it, like I talked about in previous segments, you know that, you know, we just got to get out there and play just a little bit. So, uh, we're excited to get back on the floor. And, you know, early in the season, we're most teams are like this, but we're we're more worried about us than we are, you know, the other teams. So we don't know a whole lot, you know, about Angola. Um, or Fairfield because we, we were playing that that was their first game uh, Fairfield and then the first game for Angola uh, tonight but um, we we're starting to learn who we are and I think that's the most important thing that we're going to focus on we got a list of maybe two or three things that we want to see our team do better tonight than we did on on Tuesday and so you know anytime you can continuously improve from one practice to the next one game to the next um, that's how you build a you know a solid basketball team and and unfortunately for us we didn't have five starters back or eight guys coming back we got some new guys so it is kind of what it is you know we are who we are right now we're just kind of learning uh, about who we are and and I think that's what's going to be important tonight is for us to kind of continue to focus on ourselves and and go out and play hard and and do just a couple things just a little bit better you know for tonight. Coach, I just noticed you have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, seven people played. Yeah. Now, how are you going to, after that first game, what kind of a, can you say that? Because I'm sure Angola will yeah. pick this up. And <laughs> well, it's a little different. You know, they they were there Tuesday night. So yeah, they, oh, they, that's right. They, they know. know. They they get a chance to scout us. So, you know, it's always a, a fun topic to, to talk about in terms of like, okay, we, we have a game under our belt. Is it better to have a game under your belt? or to be able to scout the other team. So Angola's coming in tonight with no games under their belt, you know, the, the newness of the season and, and the speed of the game and some of their newcomers because they have some new, newcomers as well. Um, although they've seen us, they haven't been on the floor yet this season. So, so it's kind of a wash in my mind. It's like, okay, they know what we do and who we are, and they'll know our players and, and things like that, but they haven't played yet. So I think the benefits uh, for us of – having a game under our belt is certainly going to going to help us tonight. So, I think it's going to be a good game just like it was on on Tuesday. 
Um, um, but there are some things that we're, we're going to have to do better to, to win a basketball game. You know, one of the things that Beasley said, I, you know, I was walking out the door and, and I just said, man, I said, what a tough game. He says, yeah. And you know his, his comment? He says, we're going to do better. And I thought, whoa, I, that just struck me. I don't know why, but, yeah. you know, we're going to be better. And, I, and you know, that's the whole progress here. Thing. Yeah, John Snyder, our assistant principal, um, who is a longtime uh, basketball coach, he started his career over at the, the other school up there in Kosciuszko County that, um, that we don't like to mention a no, whole lot. No, up especially there, with Bill around. But, yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, let me correct you. You said up there. You mean down there. Down there, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, but anyway, he, he's a great basketball mind. We're lucky to have him at our school for a lot of different reasons. But I, I tend to go over there and talk just a little bit. And he told me the one, one of the things that he thinks you know, is most exciting about our basketball season is that we're going to get better uh, real fast. You know, we're going we're gonna to improve every game, and we're going to get better with our youth and inexperience. And, and so tonight, is, is I think it's kind of an important game for us early in the season because – um, we have to go out and play better, you know, tonight than we did on Tuesday. And then again, that kind of sets the stage as you start to get things to kind of snowball um, as you move through, you know, the first part of the season. Um, we, we're going to have to go out and play better tonight, Coach. What about uh, you? Have your the seven? I know you. I don't want to ask you for the starters, but what are you going to do differently as far as you know? procedures and yeah that that's if, <laughs> back in the day when i coached that's always a difficult thing and then yeah. after the first quarter you know it may be completely a wash well we are we are searching for for an eighth man i can i can tell you that when we're, we're watching those jv games yeah. very intently um because there's there's three or four guys that are in the running to get some varsity minutes and so you know we're committed to playing somebody at that eighth spot and it, it might be just a two three minute segment but um, we ha- we have to start developing, you know, some depth, you know, because yeah. every season, you know, uh, unfortunately, every season includes, you know, injury and sickness yeah. and, and guys that for whatever reason can't play in a game and you have to start digging into that depth. So in the back of my mind, we're thinking about that, you know, and so, you know, Peyton Felger is a, is a great utility man for us, you know, coming off the bench. He's he was our sixth man and he'll he'll be our sixth man tonight coming in the game at about the five minute mark. So we've got the first quarter and a half kind of scripted to make sure we get Jay Finlinson in the game and Peyton Felger in the game. And we'll go with the same starters we did on Tuesday for now. Um, but we're going to get seven guys in pretty regularly. And then we're searching for that eighth man that, that can provide us we, you know, with some depth. Uh, uh, Carson Smith is certainly in the running there. He's had some success last year. And then again on Tuesday night at the JV level, um, Darius Lewis is a, is a kid that went to Mel- Milford and uh, actually transferred uh, for family reasons up to um, uh, Michigan City Marquette. And he wow. played JV basketball at uh, Michigan City Marquette last year. And he's back with us, and we're happy to have him back because he he's a guy that could develop pretty quickly, uh, just a sophomore, um, and he can put it in the hole. you know. And so I always like those guys. If we can get him... Um, you know, where we need him to be on the defensive end. He could provide some minutes there. And then, you know, our freshman class has, has had some success, you know, through middle school. And we got two other freshmen, you know, that, that are up and coming on the, on the JV team as well um, in uh, Hoffert and uh, uh, Robbie Finlinson. So, so there's three or four guys right there that you can kind of keep an eye on in the JV games that may sneak in there and get some minutes, you know, at the varsity and maybe even tonight. What about those Everingham kids? Yeah, that's the first time I, I've been asked that, so I've been uh, thinking for I, I've many been, years. I've been about... waiting. You know, I was going <laughs> to jump all over Kaz because really, what I want to know, Coach, is uh, in my very limited amount of coaching, which was next to nothing, I, I did do uh, some some little bit of baseball with my son or T-ball, I guess it was. Um, it, it wasn't fun, you know. It's like having your own son or daughter in, in your class mm-hmm. and the closest thing i've had is my nephew and my niece but tell me about that you know what's it what's it like being the head coach of a varsity basketball team now your boys are yeah. at that age where they can play it can't be easy well it, there are certainly some aspects that uh that everybody's probably aware of that's not the easiest thing that that you go through as a coach and and as a dad you know and so there's certainly some challenges. You know, I think back to, you know, here at Wallace with Coach Zolman and, and his daughter. And, and certainly I've relied on a lot of 
other coaches that have coached their kids and uh, taken advice from a lot of different you know coaches in that realm. But I can tell you, I can share some stories with you that uh, I think are appropriate that um, I was telling my family after the Fairfield game and, and my, my brother, my older brother especially, he asked me, well, what was it like? And I said, well, you know, the thing that I thought about actually at the beginning of the game at Fairfield um, – and any athlete can tell you this as soon as that ball goes up and as soon as that tip ball goes up there's something that happens to you that you just kind of zero in and you're focused and you don't pay attention yeah. in a lot of cases to the crowd or what's going on around you you're literally just you're so ingrained and, and focused in the game that you don't even think about much and so um, I can tell you with absolute certainty uh, you know 1000 percent that you know when that ball went up I, I was no longer dad I was coach and and <laughs> yeah. so um it was a weird feeling where it just was, I was just coaching players, you know, regardless of who they are or what their last name is, what the grade is. And so, you know, after the games and, and when we get home, maybe it's a little bit different in terms of dad showing back up and making sure that coach does not creep into our house. Right. Yeah. And so, I love that. well, I love and, that, and that, that, that was going to lead me right into, I was going to put your wife on the table right yeah. now. Come on. So, no, so, so mama, has now the boys all playing basketball together yeah how does that work that's great yeah it is it is uh certainly just like i said just like any other situation it presents its own set of challenges there because you know uh the joke the running joke within our coaching staff is the real assistant coach is at home you know (laughs) with with carly she's very knowledgeable she's been a head coach you think she's been a head coach she played here she played in college and so um you know she likes to talk about the basketball games well in previous years we could speak pretty open and freely about you know things that happened during the game things that we got to work on and, and in a lot of cases she'd actually watch film with me and so now it's a little trickier because uh, our conversations are a little more behind closed doors than than talking in, in front of the kids about other players or, or about their particular performances, you know. And so um, it's something that we've managed really well so far, you know, over the course of the first month or two and, and even in the summertime, you know, there. But uh, I think uh, when you take a look at those two players, just as basketball players, you know, you just got to be very proud of what they're doing from a basketball coaching perspective we're very proud of what they're doing. You know, Miles comes out the first possession of the game, and I can remember my first shot as a varsity player, uh, and it I airballed by like three feet short. <laughs> I was three feet short, and you know, for him to come out in the in the first possession where we actually scored to to shoot a shot well beyond the three point arc and and drain that shot, it's like, hey, we're here. And uh, they played very well. They hustled back on defense on three or four occasions where they, they got loose balls and ran our offense and didn't turn the ball over. So um, th- they're an exciting pair, you know, the twins are an exciting pair. But uh, uh, for me as a coach, they're just two more players that we have. They're two talented players. They're going to get better really fast, and they're going to be here for a long time. So um, it's going to be exciting to see their progress along with their classmates too. Oh, yeah. You know, because we got two, two freshmen um, on the JV and then we also have a freshman team, you know, full of 12 more freshmen, you know. And so there's some talent on the freshman team. There's some freshman talent on the, on the JV team and, and uh, certainly a couple guys playing at the varsity level, too. So, so far, so good. Well, I will tell you that my wife and I have been involved with our son's um, extracurricular activities, Boy Scouts, obviously band and, and, and choir. And the amount of time that we spend with our kids is just just awesome yeah precious is the word precious is definitely the word Kaz you know a little something about that (laughs) and and uh, my wife um, you know our son's a senior this year so he's heading off to Ball State next year and she's freaking out a little bit you know because this whole time we have spent that much time together as a family unit and so there's going to be a change obviously yep. with with him being gone and I said no there's going to be no change we're we're heading to Ball State to watch him march on the <laughs> on the go. field and, and perform and, and do all that stuff so all right well it's Angola tonight yep. coach we want everybody to come out and uh, to the Hardwood TP and and support the Warriors and uh, tonight Bill Dixon again he won't be with us he's under the weather but coach Roger Brady will have the call alongside uh, coach Kaz Zino, are you excited about that? Oh yeah, it's, well, it's always fun. And you know, when when I worked that whole season with uh, the student that was here, 
uh, Braxton Braxton Gray, yeah. Braxton yeah. Gray, yeah. I mean, that was uh, really a neat experience, and you know, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of all these CT programs. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in the community all the time. I shop locally, and you see all these kids there. Oh yeah, I'm working at the trailer factory. Oh yeah, I'm going to. I'm a chef right here at some fancy restaurant up in Chicago yep. because he went through the culinary arts. I mean, it's huge yeah. what they do. You know, it, everybody doesn't have to go to college and they're making tremendous amount of money, having a great life because my, of the CTE program. My friends make fun of me when I say this statement, this comment, and I know we were just talking basketball and we're back to CTE. Yeah. But we're pretty passionate yeah, about it. Yeah, that's easy to do. I say this all the time. I'm a graduate of Wawasee. I graduated in 1990. I would give anything to go back to high school to be able to participate in any one of these programs. Because when I was here, we only had autos and uh, building trades or cosmetology up at Fairfield. That was Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, What would I be doing today if those, these opportunities that we have now here were available when I was here at Wabasee? And Clint Beasley, as a matter of fact, who we're going to be talking to in a bit. Uh, He's a graduate of Wabasee. So, my friends make fun of me for saying that I give anything to go back to high school. <laughs> well, no, I would it, it, when it comes to that. Anyways. Yeah, the so. educational values and the opportunities. And, and uh, you, you know, again, I, I'll say this, too, about basketball and, and the classroom, too. It's, a, it's just a platform to teach, you know, and, and we know that uh, the curriculum, there's a lot more outside of curriculum that, that teachers in terms of being mentors and and leaders within the school that they get get an opportunity to teach. So it's kind of cool for me as a coach to be able to do that every day, um, as an educator to do that every day, and and our CT programs provide that platform for our teachers to to teach. You know, and so that includes a lot of different aspects. Well, and life. as you said, there's a lot of teaching on that basketball card as well too. That goes hand in hand. Okay, coach. Well, good luck tonight with Angola. We've got one more segment coming up, and we have our special guest today, Clint Beasley. A Wabasi grad. We'll talk to him in just a bit here on Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix. Welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix. Jeremy Van Lu in for Bill Dixon. Coach Kaz Zinal, you're still with us, and we have a special guest this morning. His name is Clint Beasley, one of the Beasley brothers here of Syracuse, a graduate of Wabasee High School. I think you said class of 1996. 96, yeah. Okay. Uh, you played baseball and basketball. Then you went off to college, and uh, does it say baseball here? Yeah, I played baseball at uh, Dayton, University of Dayton. Dayton, Dayton University, Okay. Uh, and uh, you've got a family. We'll get to that here in a moment. I'm just reading Coach Everingham's uh, chicken scratch here. So uh, <laughs> That's pretty uh, good. You can interpret that. That's, that's yeah, quite well, a feat. Well, to be honest <laughs> with you, I think his handwriting's better than mine. Really? So I think <laughs> we're, we're all good there. So, Clint Be- Beasley, thanks again for coming and, and talking Wabasee Warrior basketball. So let's take everybody back to the, uh, the mid-'90s. I just said I'm a graduate 1990. Um, and uh, we had some spectacular basketball teams back in the day. The Beasley brothers all started going through those programs. So take us back in time when you were playing ball here at Wawasee. What was it like then, maybe in comparison to what you think it might be like today? And your coaches and everything. Mention them too. because they... Yeah, sure. It was incredible. You know, so I think at a young age, that was what we did, you know. Um, even I was just laughing because – at my youngest is seven years old who's going to be the ball boy tonight at oh the my game, gosh right? how so neat it's uh pretty incredible that you think about that and the nostalgia of what it was but we you know we went to every game as kids so it started at a young young age not you know junior high or anything like that you know four five six seven eight years old we're going to every every game so that's the that's what that's how it started for us i remember watching you know playing against uh, the team really good team with the uh, fervida and newcomer and um brian baker and those guys were ranked you know <laughs> he says fervida and of course yeah. I can, i'll never forget bill dixon back in the day fervida with authority oh, yeah. all the time <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> which was said often right? yeah yeah but that was an incredible team that we got to and i was a freshman on that or that team was 
uh, those guys were seniors, but um, very competitive. And, you know, Coach Gary Gashert and Randy Albersey were, were our coaches and, and Zolman. Uh, Kim was our coach as well. So, you know, you were talking about Shauna, um, and I had the opportunity to come in yesterday and just shoot baskets and say, Oh, my gosh. You look up on the wall and you see Shauna's uh, picture and just the the whole thing. I mean, she was at every every practice we had shooting and uh, just practice, practice. But it the whole the whole deal is neat. So for me, it's very very special. I know Scott's coaching this year, which I get a little bit of even more of an inside peek on the team uh, from from this year's perspective, which is exciting. You know, so it was just neat just here being a couple minutes early listening to coach um and you can hear the incitement in his in his voice too right but oh my uh, it's uh the whole deal pretty special so it's nice well i have to watch what i say because your brother vince is my boss technically so (laughs) (laughs) but uh i i've known the beasley family for for many years of course knew your dad really well and um great people in the community and, and definitely give back to the community. So tell us about your family and in, in particular, how many kids and sure. wife and all that fun stuff. Yep. I have three children, a 14 year old daughter, Kate, I have a 12 year old daughter, Molly and a seven year old little boy, uh, Brooks. So, um, we live in Huntertown, Indiana, um, Fort Wayne area. So they're Carroll school district right now. And, um, I say that for now because the youngest, Brooks said uh, that he's going to be a Wallace Warrior. So he, oh he's, he, my he's, he says that often. So how neat. <laughs> pretty exciting. So, so uh, you need to be moving here yeah, pretty quick. Now, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> he always asks that. So when do we have to move to get here? So, <laughs> but um, so no, I've lived there for um, 10, well, let's see, 12 years. I've lived in Fort Wayne. I lived in Indianapolis for a while. Um, went to school at Dayton and. I don't know. Did anybody see the game last night? They no. <laughs> I know I went to Xavier, so I've been to Dayton University a few times to watch them. They beat Kansas last night. Oh my gosh! It was fourth in the nation, so I wore my gear here. Oh for well, you there guys. you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a little bit of my background. So after school, I went and played baseball at Dayton. Really good experience. Got the opportunity to travel and um, meet a lot of good guys, lifetime type friends, and and. And then lived in Indy for 10 years and back in Fort Wayne for 12. And then we actually have a cottage on Syracuse Lake right in between my mom and, and my brother. So we're able to come back quite a bit. Uh, oh, that's great. And see the family. So, so you, you know, to raise a family, you, you've got to have a job, yep. right, with an income. <laughs> yep. So uh, so what are, you doing? what are you doing these days? I, I sell commercial roofing with a tr- company by the name of Tremco Roofing. So I work with a lot of school districts, hospitals. Um, I work southwest michigan area northern indiana so i've been doing that for that for 10 years um and before that i sold yellow pages so it was uh that was the prior life right so my kids don't even know what a phone book is yellow pages what 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 is this dad yeah <laughs> so that's funny i didn't even think of that Oh my! Well, what are what are your kids involved with? Uh, you know, you said your boy's going to be a ball boy tonight. Yep. He wants to be a warrior. So you said you got three. Are they involved yep. in any extracurriculars? Yeah, he's everything. He's anything you can do. He's about a hundred percent basketball right now. Um, took him to the Notre Dame game last week, so now he's all football, right? So it's it's kind of the the flavor of the day. But um, he's he's passionate about all sports. So we've got fortunate in fort wayne we've got ops which is um and we have the facilities where he can do even at a young age he can get in the gym and go you know once twice three days a week um and have that opportunity so kate my oldest she actually does pole vault of all things oh Uh, my gosh i was just gonna ask you about your daughters yeah she got into that um with a friend of hers in sixth grade and she's a freshman now, so she'll be doing it this year. It'll be her first year at high school doing it. Oh, how neat. Yeah, how so neat to go watch your kids play. We did not have any pole vaulters in our family. Well, Mark Atkinson, my cousin, he did at Miss Cinewa, but um So it was a random thing that she got into, and she's she's passionate about that. And then, and then Molly plays volleyball. So we've got a little bit of everything covered. So I mentioned that, that um, your parents um, known them. So what... What what did they say to you kids 
Uh, you mentioned that you went to every game, and I'm sure that was the big part of it. But but did they did they say, guys, you got to be involved in something? Mm -hmm. um, but but was was it more leaning towards sports? I mean, was that you're yeah. just a big time <laughs> sports family, right? Yeah, I think I, that's a good question. I remember one time I forget this christmas time and i said dad what did we get i don't remember like the toys or things we got for christmas he said you get a football a basketball and a baseball <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe a mitt if so, you're lucky right yeah. well, so, yeah. whole way we started golf we so, were doing your dad yeah yeah so, so he must have played I, a lot of golf as a kid too i started playing golf when i was about 10 or 11 yeah. so he put a club in my hand early but it was to answer your question it was it was all sports so there was really no Hey, you got to, you know, be involved in something. It was what, what, everything we wanted to be involved with. Right. So even football, we ended up playing later, um, in high school because our cousin convinced us to go out for football and that was a great experience. So we were, we were, we loved having a ball in our hand all, all around. And, you know, it's funny too, like a lot of the kids, Oh man, you got to be a heck of a water skier growing up on the lake, right? <laughs> yeah. Now we're in the gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, we didn't really, we didn't really get too good at any of the water sports, but but surely enjoyed it. So well, you obviously have been following. Uh, well, you're an alum. You bleed green and gold, as as I do as well. Um, and you've been following, you know, even since you know your high school days. Wawasee's basketball and probably baseball program as well. So, so tell us what you think about the program as you see it today. Mm. Uh, maybe in comparison to what it was like, but we're not here to compare coaches necessarily in teams, uh, but the game itself. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you think about it today? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, you know, like to John's point earlier too, this team this year is exciting. It's young. I think it's going to get better. Um, a lot more rapidly than maybe a, 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 a veteran type team. Uh, I think there's a lot of a nice, nice pieces of the puzzle. Uh, Robertson, the big, the big kid. I mean, I remember last, just this summer, we're in the gym, and again, you know, Brooks is going to camp, right? He's able to go to basketball camp here, and I said, "How tall is that? How tall is that kid now?" You know, I mean, so he, he looked like he grew about four inches this year. So we've got. We've got that. We've got the sharpshooters. We've got an all-conference kid. We've. I think there's a lot of pieces of this team um, that could really come together, and I think they could come together um, pretty quickly. So um, I'm anxious to see it. I'm really excited for the game tonight. I haven't had a chance to I, see the first game. Um, so, yeah, I think – in comparison to what it was, I mean, I think the biggest difference is always no non-class basketball versus class, right? Like when we had played, it was it was non-class. So my senior year was the last year of class basketball, um, which is different different than it is now. But it gives everybody an opportunity um, in this type of environment. So it's it's different, but um, a lot of the same constants, right? Well, you still do you know Mr. Koblenz, Alan Koblenz? I He's the engineering teacher here at Wawasee. He's been here for years and, and a coach as well. Um, and, and his big thing about basketball, his big saying is, all you got to do is take the round thing and put it in the round thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's basketball that's 101 down, right huh? there. Uh, of course, we all know there's more involved with that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that hasn't changed. Right. Taking the round thing and putting it in the round thing. Yeah, and we've got several guys that can do it, you know. I mean, Dukes is is a heck of a player, fun to watch. I mean, I, I watched a couple of games last year. I think he had, oh, I forget what game it was, 25, 30 points. Um, so it shows you the capability of the guys that can. The, the Twins, are, they can shoot it. I've seen them. I've seen them do it in my driveway plenty of times. So... <laughs> I want to see him do it, do it, and um, do it tonight, right? But I, I just think there's a lot of nice pieces uh, on this team this year um, that could come together pretty quickly. And tell me when you're going to transfer back into this area and, and just stay at your place over on Syracuse Lake. Uh, you know, I just a quick story. We had that and uh, came up here in '77, and uh, with the idea of moving back getting some little shack some, somewhere on the or, channel somewhere and that was in 77 we've been here ever since we're hoping so. middle school for the little man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so. but it was this is a, this is a great community and this high school with all these cte programs and all the sports you, the opportunities here are phenomenal compared to other hey places. you heard me say it's you know i i, I my my 
kid, my my buddies make fun of me when I say I'd I'd love to go back to high school. But yeah, yeah. you you know, yeah. I, you were just six years past my point of graduating here. I mean. Don't you think? I, if you had all these it, opportunities back in when you were here as well? Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. Kaz, and you mentioned something too. You said, I, I thought was very interesting and spot on was not everybody even has to go to college, right? I think you get stuck in that paradigm of, oh, yeah. You know, you, know, you just don't. All these programs, and, you know, I've got kids that uh, are in these business fields, culinary mm-hmm. and welding, and they move up in the ranks in these big, huge companies and, uh, and all these other CET programs, CTE programs that they have. It's just a phenomenal thing. And, and they get in this. Look at, uh, look at Van Lu. And I don't want to mention him too much because mm-hmm. I still like working here. But look what he's doing now <laughs> right. because he started, you know, with Bill Dixon and this uh, thing. The- and now he's into radio pretty well pretty and the, heavily and the growth of it too oh uh, you yeah know, it, it, it's it, you know whether it's one or two when we were when we were kids right yeah. i mean there, yeah. there wasn't a ton and each year it seems more and more and more right even from a skills trait standpoint of you always need that labor force especially yes. right now right look at right now yeah. um pretty highly sought well after. And, and one of the other things and then i know we got to go here we're short on time but one of the other things that i have seen is Think about it. When you were in high school and you had to go to the math class, no, no disrespect, Kaz, <laughs> uh, and you had to go to the English class and the history, you know, the core type mm-hmm. classes, which you got to have to graduate, right? But then you get to come to a CTE class or a band class or choir, and, you, and, you, and the kids, they just kind of unwind. Yes. You know, it, it relieves a little bit of stress because, okay, now I get to touch something. I get to work on something. And and this is probably something that that maybe I want to pursue as a career, or at least dabble with and, and figure it out. So, yeah. again, we didn't have that. Mine was band and choir. Mm-hmm. That was my escape, if you will. Um, but um, it's 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 awesome. And of course, um, we like your brother, who, who runs the program, Vince. So uh, I just saw you, him walking on the way in yeah, here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we let him come in here now and then, but we won't let him push any buttons. Uh, that's for sure. So, Clint Beasley, thanks for coming to talk to us. 1996 graduate here of Wabasee High School, and who knows, there might be another young Beasley boy coming yes. up the ranks here at Wabasee. Or even a huh? Beasley girl. Or, yeah. You bring him yeah. back. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. It's great seeing you, Kaz, and I appreciate you letting me All right. spend a few minutes with you. Thank you. Well, don't forget, tonight it's Wabasee Warrior Basketball home against Angola. JV's going to tip off at 6.15. Varsity will follow. Varsity game, Bill's out, but Coach Roger Brady will take his place alongside Coach Kaz Zinal. That will be right here on 93.7 FM The Mix, online at 937themix.com, and live video that Clint knows all about because in Huntertown, Huntertown, is that what you said? In Huntertown, that's the only way to watch the games. And I feel sorry for you that you got to listen and watch Bill Dixon and Coach Kaz Zinal, but that's okay. Uh, It's youtube.com slash cpgtv. Have a great day. Bye-bye.